What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV back here for some more content for you guys and today we are going to be analysing Steve Hitchens uh, signings at Spurs seeing as Steve Hitchin walked out on the club yesterday quit uh, which we'll bring you more info on a bit later on today. But uh, right now, we're going to be looking at all his 19 signings from when he started, not to exactly when he finished, but just until before Paratici came in. So we're going to be looking at the 19 signings um, around that period of time. The, th the four tier lists that we've got for you today are star signing, good signing, underwhelming and flop. Um, so mm. I'm not sure how many star signings are going to be there. Oh, but it's going to be chock a block, mate. <laughs> it's going to be full of star signings. But I'm looking forward uh, to getting into this one. How many star signings, you reckon? Early prediction. Uh, <laughs> come on, got at least one in there. Surely, <laughs> surely. He was there for five years. Come on. All right, well, let's get into it. I've um, organised them into date-wise, so starting from the earlier signings to the latest signing. And let's start off with Paolo Gazaniga. Um, I would, in terms of how he played for Tottenham, I'd put him in underwhelming. Probably, I wouldn't say it was quite a flop. He was, he he wasn't great when he had, he, as in, he had that stretch, didn't he, where Hugo was injured and he came in and he wasn't terrible, wasn't amazing, but I wouldn't put him in flop territory. The thing is, Gazaniga was except for that one thing against Chelsea. That was oh my word, yeah. <laughs> what, the karate, kid. yeah, that could be a flop just by just for that by <laughs> the itself. Thing is, but... The thing is with Gazaniga, he came in to play a backup role for Hugo Lloris. Yeah. Um, and he did that quite well, let's be honest. I think that when he ever came in for a game here and there, he was actually very good, but it was when he had an extended run of time in the team, that's when you really started to see his flaws, didn't you? Yeah, and he ended up leaving on a free, didn't he? Or yeah. very, or very, very cheap. Mm. I remember actually his first two games, I think it was like Palace at home, and there was a current which was the other one. He actually got man of the match, I remember, and he actually played really well. Yeah, he got man of the match a few times. But I think... Distribution well, uh, was really good. Distribution was decent, yeah. Um, I don't know. Can we put it in good? I think... Oh, yeah, I don't think he's a flop. I think he's... I, I, I would put him in underwhelming. But I guess he did a decent job as an understudy. What I mean, <laughs> when you compare him to the next goalkeeper that's on this list. Yeah, who's definitely a flop. <laughs> no, I think he's underwhelming. I would say he's underwhelming. He wasn't, like, incredible. But mm. he was okay for a time. But I'd say he was more probably uh like more in the I negative think he side. kind of flirts in between underwhelming and, and good signing just because of what he was brought in to do he was brought in to play back up to Hugo Lloris and he did that quite well he did okay but then when he when he actually when he had like three months he wasn't great was he so mm. that's why he's underwhelming for me. all right let's put him in underwhelming Gazaniga goes into underwhelming next one is one of a kind Juan Foyth <laughs> Signed for eight million from mm. um I can't remember who it was Nazi and wasn't it? You know, in, yeah, that's in, it. Yeah, Indep I can't remember how you say yeah, that name. Right. Um Again, good player. Uh, I thought whenever called upon, um, he was actually pretty decent, especially when he was playing in a back three under Poch. Mm. I remember in the few in his first season or second season in the Champions League a few times, quite impressive. Um, but. Uh, I don't know. Mourinho just did not fancy him, did he? Whatsoever. I think as soon as I Mourinho thought it was a mistake. In, I said it at the time. I don't know if, like it's a mistake getting rid of this guy. I, I really believed in his qualities. I thought he was a really good football player. Yes, he was yeah, very rash and young and learning the game and stuff when he came to us and did make quite a few mistakes. But I always thought that uh, the talent was there with Juan Foy. Yeah, but even if you look at him now, like he plays right back for Villarreal a lot. Is that would you say like would you want him now as a right back for Tottenham? Like I don't know. Maybe instead of Emerson or Doherty, but probably I not. I don't know. Probably I, w I don't think he's. I, I wouldn't want him as right wing back. Definitely not. Maybe a right back. He's still decent, but like I still, f I still feel like even now he's probably looking finding his best position. Even he's playing well for Villarreal. Aren't he? Even when for Villarreal, he's not just playing right back. I've, he's played uh, CDM a few times. He's played uh, centre back a few. Yeah, times. Yeah, but he's maybe. primarily a right back. Yeah, and when I've seen him in CDM, actually, I think he's really good there. Um, but it, where where he would fit in into the Spurs team right now is probably a backup centre back. No, I'm just I'm just saying like even now I know he's played well. He played well in their run to Europa League final uh, right back, and he played the I'm pretty sure he started the final, didn't he? Mm. So he's still pretty good for them. But for us, unfortunately, he played CDM against Arsenal, didn't he? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was right back. No, I thought it was CDM. I well, one of the legs might be CDM, yeah. but one of the legs was definitely right back. Um, I think for us, unfortunately. Like, uh, he didn't develop into the player we thought he could, so unfortunately he has to go into underwhelming. As yeah. much as he was pretty good, 
um, the way it ended has to go into underwhelming. And uh, I would agree with you um, just because of the way it ended. But I think if Poch would have stayed on, mm -hmm. it could have been a good signing. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame how, how Mourinho just didn't get looking at all, did he? Mm. All right, we're putting him underwhelming. All right, next is that man, Fernando Llorente. Yeah, and good I thought, signing for me. yeah, definitely a good signing. I think actually, if you if you if you ask me this question after his first season, he's a flop. But yeah, yeah I think he has to go under good signing just because of the impact he had, and also when um, Kane. I remember there was one point when Kane and both Kane and Son were injured. Um, it was only for like two or three games, and he really stepped up and he got a couple of goals, and we um, got some wins on our belt. Obviously, the moment against Man City, he uh, came on a half time against Ajax, changed the game. He was a great, he was a great top striker. Um, he really, he really was one of those strikers who um, would come on and um, make an impact to change the game. So, as much as there were games where you're <coughs> thinking, "What the hell is he doing on the pitch?" I think more often than not, he was a pretty good striker for us off the bench. So, I think he's a good signing. Yeah. Yeah, good signing. And when you compare him to the kind of backup strikers we signed mm. prior to that, Vincent Janssen sold, well, Soldado wasn't brought in as a backup, but he mm. ended up being a backup. Um, you know, Vincent Janssen, Soldado, these kind of strikers, he was levels above them uh, in terms of what he showed in the Spurs shirt. And yeah, central to that Champions League run. And in, in when he was asked to come in in these kind of cup games as well against the lower sides, he always did well scoring a hat trick against yeah. Tranmere. True. Um, I can't remember. He scored another hat trick, didn't he, for us? Uh, Tranmere and Rochdale. Rochdale, that was it. So yeah, um, he did well in those games. So, Champions yeah. League got uh, the Dortmund as well in the yeah. first leg. He also, like he did he well in the so Champions League. He was so important that Champions League run. Yeah. So important. And yeah, that's why he's got to go in good signing. Yeah, he just can't go in star signing. He wasn't that great. He was yeah. pretty good though. Yeah. All right, uh, Serge Aurier. I don't quite put him in flop, but I would put him in underwhelming because he because I think he was signed to replace Walker. Mm. And he never really convinced in the three years he was there. He knew he was not. He wasn't terrible as much as people would, would, would tell you. He was. He was awful. I don't think he was awful. Uh, and I also think there were periods where he was really good for us. But I think ultimately, the mistakes were too costly on a too regular basis. So I would put him in underwhelming. The funny thing is, he still gets in our team right now. Mm -hmm. if we had him. He's <laughs> probably our best right back if we have him in the squad right now. Um, I've always been a fan of Serge Aurier. I really have. No matter. I know. He's made loads of costly errors and his concentration levels and stupid mistakes at the back, costing penalties and red cards and what have you. He, that's all true. But I always thought that the fan base kind of always overstated how bad he was. I always thought he was better than what people made him out to be. Um, but I think I kind of do agree with you with underwhelming because he wasn't as good as the pre his uh, predecessor in Carl Walker. We always needed an upgrade on him, and we massively need an upgrade in that position now. And I'll take him back from now until the end of the season in a heartbeat. Obviously, <laughs> it's not going to happen, but um, I like Serge Aurier. I think he did a good job for us. And even even after uh, Poch left and when Jose came in, I felt like he kind of cut uh, the majority of those mistakes out of his game. Yeah. There were like a, a, a few that you can count. Obviously, that one against Leicester, um, the free kick gave way in the Carabao Cup final as well, uh, which you can put down to Aurier. But I think all in all, he did cut the majority of those mistakes out. Definitely in his uh, second season under Mourinho. And he actually started the season so well. I remember scoring Old Trafford and he was playing really well. Um, but again, never just never fully convinced, did he? So ha like as a replacement for Walker has to be underwhelming, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aurier, underwhelming. They're all going to be underwhelming, all these signings. <laughs> Literally <laughs> all underwhelming. Uh, Davinson Sanchez. Again, I think I'd have to put him underwhelming. Mm. I think, especially, we spent 42... Oh, wait, well, a lot of people would argue, considering we spent 42 million on him, he's a flop. But Yeah, but he's still a young player. Yeah, and I think he's had some good... I think he definitely, in his, in his first two seasons at Spurs, was pretty good. Um, when he played alongside Toby and Jan, especially in a back three, I thought he was quite good. Um, definitely his first season, he played really well. But um, yeah, when, when Mourinho came in, since Mourinho came in, he definitely lost a lot of confidence. And his his performances started definitely going downhill for a good couple of years. They have taken an upturn this season. This season's definitely been much better, yeah, ever since the start. Um, again... Um, he was at the beginning of Nuno's tenure. He was great, and then at the end of Nuno's tenure, he was. Uh, it was the performances were starting to wane a bit. But when Con since Conte's come in, they've gone back up again. But let's so pretty the, good. But I, I, again, let's, let's be honest though. He was brought in as a successor to the Tongan or Alderweireld. Yeah, and that just doesn't cut it. Definitely not. And as well, like 
I, I still want to get an upgrade on him even now. So as much as he's playing well, he's always a player where you feel like, first of all, mistakes just around the corner. Um, he's still not very comfortable on the ball. And as much as I think he's a good defender, he's been an under, he's, he's signing, well, considering the expectations of him, 42 million, how we started as well, he's been a bit underwhelming in the long term. Mm, I actually think he might flirt in between underwhelming and flop. Because we signed because so of much. the big signing, because of what he was brought in to do. Um, and because he's what he showed on a consistent basis. I mean, mm. there is an argument for flop there. There is, because the big price tag we're going for. There's mm. an argument. Yeah. I'll, I'll just give him an underwhelming. If you add up Vertonghen and Alderweireld, you don't even get to the price that we signed Davison Sanchez for. Not at all. Not even close. It's mad. Yeah. It's mad to think of it. It's half, half the money, literally. Half the money, yeah. So where are we so putting him? I think he's underwhelming. We'll put him in underwhelming because I do feel a bit bad putting him into flop because he has shown uh, good stuff at Spurs, just not really consistently. Um, I think right now his place in the squad as a backup um, to the right side of uh, Christian Romero, mm. I think he, he that's quite a good role for him because I think him as a backup is actually a good player to have in the squad. Yeah, he's actually not a bad backup centre-back for sure. But 45 million would pay for him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. We'll put him in underwhelming. Okay, Davinson Sanchez goes in underwhelming. Lucas Mora. I think we know where yeah, he's going. I think he's a good signing. Um, you could argue. Uh, I don't think, well, he, I don't think he quite makes it to Hat star signing. in Amsterdam. Exactly. Actually, Surely I, he gets uh, a star signing just for that. The brace at Old Trafford as well. I just, unfortunately, it's just been too inconsistent, but he is still a mainstay in the first team now. One of the best performers this season. Yeah, definitely. Definitely true. And I, and I think he has a lot of quality. You can see what he brings to the team when he does play. So... I think you have to make, say he's a good signing. Like a decent, like fairly cheap, 25 million. How can you have well. someone who scores a hat trick in a second half of a Champions League final, semi final, whilst we're 2 0 down and not going to start signing? That just goes to show uh, what, what it's been the rest of Yeah, it just goes to show the rest of his first career. Because yeah. if, if he'd been even half decent the rest of his time, you know, you definitely wouldn't have start signing. But he's only been like very mediocre for a lot of, the, for a lot of it, unfortunately. You know what, with Mora, as much as he's having a good season, one of our best players, I actually do think he has um, fallen off a little bit over the last couple of games. Yeah, he has. So against Leicester, I thought he was terrible. And again, um, against Chelsea, he only had, he had 20 minutes or so, didn't he? But I think he's been. As a squad player, he's like very good, especially that season where he did get that hat trick in Amsterdam. I think got 15 goals that season, like he was really solid. But I think overall, during his time at Tottenham, since he signed, um, he's been good, but he's never been our best player or start or like an unbelievable sign. Yeah, he's never really like maybe this season is the only year he's done it, but he's never actually grabbed that shirt and being like, "This is my position." He's, his his spot is always up for grabs. That's yeah. the truth. Yeah. All right. Good signing, Lucas Mora. Jack Clark, I think we know where yeah, this guy's going. I think we have our first flop of yeah, the tier. Yeah, I uh, agree with that. 10 million we signed this guy for. 10 million. Has yet to, has he made, first of all, in the Premier League, he hasn't made an appearance, has he? I mean, he might have made some in Europa he, League. Yeah. He Europa has, League. No, Europa League, he made un, maybe a couple of sub appearances here and there. Yeah. And in Conference the League, has, I think. Like I think he gets Marine and, and this kind of games. Yeah. Conference League, I think he played um, maybe one of the legs of Passos. He played that game where Nuno changed all the whole eleven and, and kept all the, everyone behind, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, played that game. And he hasn't shown anything. Let's be honest, he really hasn't shown anything in a Tottenham shirt. And and let's be honest, when he's gone out alone, he's barely shown anything as well. And it says it all, right? Right, we bought him in for ten million in that in that summer. What was it? Eighteen, nineteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah, nineteen, twenty. We brought him in that summer. And fast forward two years, he's still going out alone to League One. He's going out alone to League One, and that says it all, to be honest. Yeah, I think. And it's even a terrible even signing. in the under twenty threes, it's not like we're hearing about him um, with rave reviews like Mark and Scarlett. And Apparently, don't. To be fair, I've heard he is doing okay in the under twenty threes. Okay, like he's getting some not goals. Rave and reviews like Mark and He's not and, killing and it. Scarlett. He's, he is one of the better players in the twenty threes. Yeah, fine, I take that. But when I'm talking, when you're talking about under twenty three players, I know Kane was was a different case, but. You, all these players get like rave reviews, like Mark Kande, like Scarlett, like um, like a few other players doing it time and time again. Ollie Skip was one of the players that were getting rave reviews. Um, I think Winksy at the time as well was getting rave reviews there. Scarlett, I mean, you get okay comments about him saying, so like, yeah, yeah, he's doing well, but not, nothing outstanding. You mean Clark? Clark, yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, yeah. Look, I don't think I think um, he's he'll be gone in the summer. I think I think he, we're waiting for him to just have a good loan spell. It just hasn't happened yet, mm. and um, I think again, this will be uh, this will be another case of um, hopefully he does well at Sunderland, but I don't think he's going to be a Tottenham player. 
All right, Clark, you are going into flop. Next up is Giovanni Lo Celso. I, unfortunately, I think he has to go and flop. 100% flop. I think he has to go and flop. 100% flop. As much as I want him to go and a underwhelm me. <laughs> a run of five games does not get you above a flop. No. And that's all he's done at Spurs. Let's be honest. He signed for 45 million around, yeah. including loan fee and transfer fee. Never stopped being on the injury table. One Premier League goal throughout his whole time. Bear, he like how many? He, he I think he played ninety minutes. I think six times in his Tottenham career. Yeah, I think it was a tiny bit more than that. I think it was about eight times or something. I think yeah. Ndombele was about eight. I think he was like six, something like that. Like really low, low okay. amount, or maybe Premier League he was six or something. Maybe he did something in the other. I cups. thought, from my understanding, I thought it was Ndombele on about nine and him about eight, but I could be wrong. I think it was not, I read nine and six, but whatever. Okay, doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think especially of late. He's been um, really bad. Like whenever he's be, been on the pitch, I've uh, always looking for him to recapture that form when he broke into the team early doors. But considering the, 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 the fact of the matter is, we signed him 45 million, and three years later, he's now out on loan. Not at even, not even a transfer. Villarreal. Not even a transfer out on loan with an option to buy. You know, and that says it all about his time at Tottenham. So, yeah. massive flop, unfortunately. Yeah. Although, uh, I'm reading that apparently Poch was the one who forced this one through, not Hitchin. Mm. But, but, but that he was the signing under Hitchin still. Mm. All right. Le Celso, flop. Next up, Tangi Undombele. Unfortunately, he's also same same as Le Celso, to be honest. Has flop. to be a flop. Has to be. Again, 64, our record signing. This is our record signing. Barely completing 90 minutes. Did, a matter, he played he was here for two and a half years and didn't even play 100 appearances. Played 92 games, which is mm. really poor. You're talking about record a player signing. who every manager's had a problem with. Every yeah. manager. Obviously, he played his best football under Jose Mourinho. But non-stop problems. Non-stop problems. The cycle of Undombele where, you know, he wants to leave. Nobody takes him. And then he knuckles down, becomes one of the better players, and then the cycle starts again. And... It was just so frustrating with both of these players because you know, you just know how much talent both of these players have. And if we could have got them on side, like what additions they'd be to the team. But yeah. unfortunately, it just wasn't wasn't happening for them. And, and if, in, yeah, and if Ndombele was playing regularly and maybe he wasn't as good as we'd hoped, but, you know, you're still being in a shift and being reliable, you can put him in underwhelming. But because he's just been so out of the team all the time, because man, no, no manager seems to trust him at all, except for a one spell under Mourinho uh, where he was seemed to be playing regularly. Like, he just doesn't seem trusted by any of the managers. Uh, he a, a lot of the time, he uh, appeared like, for example, the North London derby, both games at the Emirates. He never had played. a good goal game against Arsenal. Ever. He played two games at the Emirates, and he was diabolical. He was completely out fought in both games, um, outrun. And, and and those are the big moments. He did have some good games against Man City where uh, he did step up. But apart from that... And Man United as well. And Man United. But apart from that, they were few and far between. And for 65 million, you don't pay that money for a couple of good appearances against City. I just, you know what really stands out to me is um, the game against Bayern Munich when we beat them 7-2. In those first 20 minutes, he was unbelievable. Mm. And then... And then the rest game is absolutely tragic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we end up continuing seven goals. So I think he has to be a flop. Mm, I agree. Flop for Tangi. Next one's going to be an interesting one in Ryan Sessegnon. If you're asking me a few weeks ago, he's definitely a flop. Does he go into slightly underwhelming now? I mean, again, it's a bit different to Clark, whereas Sessegnon um, has had a loan to about Hoffenheim where he did pretty well. So, and then he's come back. And when he has played this season, apart from the game against Muro, where he got sent off, he has been pretty good. So, yeah, uh, but you know, that's like you're talking about three or four performances. Correct. Actually. Correct. We did sign him for 25 million, but he's still young 20, what, 21, 22. He's still got a lot of time on his side. So, I, look, I guess if we were talking about right now, you probably do have to put him down as a flop. But, it, but I reckon. Uh, he could turn out to be a good signing. Uh, I, I in a, think in a few months, maybe think, by the end of the season. I think with Conte coming in now and kind of believing in him and putting him in the picture, and him kind of responding in a positive way, I think that it's kind of earned him the right to be an underwhelming. But it could easily sway both ways. In a year's time, we could be putting him good signing or flop. It depends It'll, how we'll it Put it this out. way: if, if if we were to sell, let's say we sold him in January, how much money we get? We get a month getting for him, you reckon? Um, I still think you can get a decent fee for him because um, because of the age. 
I mm. still think you can get a decent fee. Not and the I 25 think, we paid, though. But. Um... I don't, I, don't know. Get, I don't think we get the 25 we paid. I don't know. I think um, I still think he's not like um, a player where he's completely disgraced himself. He just hasn't been able to get on the pitch as much as we would have liked. He had a decent loan spell at Hoffenheim. I don't know. I still I think we could get uh, closer to the money we paid for him. I really do. I reckon we get about between 15 and 20. That's that's the ballpark we're looking at if we sold him last in, in the December. But he has played well recently, so... I think, I, I, yeah, I can't, I don't think I can put him, because right now, if he, if, let's say he left in January, he's a flop, isn't he? Yeah. So I think he hasn't proved anything since then. So I think you have to put him in flop right now, but he could turn out later not to be a flop. But as, as things stand, I guess he is a flop. Like if he was, was to leave right as in tomorrow, he would be a flop. Yeah. That's the truth. So as things stand, he is a flop. Oof. It's a harsh one, one but I, I, so, so, one. That's, I, that's, it's kind of how I see it. Like, if we're doing it as of right now, I think he so is one. Putting every single player we signed that summer in Poch's last summer as a flop. Correct. So we spent over 100 million. That's mad. This thing was Sessignon. That's the thing. If he left right it's now, he's hard, a flop. It's hard to argue against what mm -hmm. you're saying. Yeah. But I have a I have a hard time in my mind putting him in flop. Yeah, I feel I bad. Believe in him so much. I feel bad putting him in flop, but he is flop right now. That's the truth. He has, unless he proves otherwise, mm. I think he is a flop. And he hasn't had the chance this season to prove otherwise because he's only had three or four games. Yeah. But he kept Mo Salah in his pocket in his back he did. pocket against Liverpool. He did. We can't put him in just underwhelming you based can't on be one keeping game. Mo Salah in your back pocket and being called a flop. <laughs> Surely. As I don't know. I just think, as I said, if he leaves tomorrow, he'd be called a flop. But we'll always have that game against Liverpool. We exactly. <laughs> always have that game. <laughs> oh, man. Are we really That's putting me. Ryan Sessegnon in flop? That's what I think. It's up to you. I don't know. I'll go look. If you want to put him underwhelming, I'll put him in underwhelming. But I think, yeah, I think right now he's a flop. Because I'm looking at him compared to, like, Juan Foyth. Yes. Oh, compared to Ryan Foyth. Well, yeah. I mean, Foyth, I think, showed a lot more than Sessegnon. Hmm. I don't think he's of the level of Aurier, Sanchez and Foyf. Yeah, but I think he's above Jack Clark. He's above Jack Clark, but is he above La Celso and Dombele right now? Probably not. No, nah, you're right. <laughs> All right. I can't argue against it. Sessignon goes into flop. Um, I want to know you guys' opinions on that one in the comments section below. Stevie B, Stephen Bergvine, Stevie Wonder. Again, like him. If, if you ask me right now, I think goes an underwhelming. Mm. Um, could be very different come the next uh, come the end, end of the, of the season. season yeah. I think he's turned it around recently, especially since Conte's come in. He's really shut on show his worth. Unfortunately, uh, he's been here now two years. This is his, yeah, it'll be two years um, this summer, this uh, win, uh, January, and hasn't shown what we had hoped he'd show uh, after a really fast start on his debut. I unfortunately think he's been a bit underwhelming. Yeah, um, if you're going on last season alone, it's a flop. Yeah. Um, if you're going everything included, um, when he came in, hit the ground running, and he was actually really good from then until the end of the season, showed some good stuff for us. And he scored a great goal in the and United. Yeah, and he scored against Wolves as well, and didn't Wolves. he? And um, Wolves. So he stepped up as well with time and need. I think we had Kane and Son out, and he was playing up front sometimes uh, with Deli Ali. I think from then on into the end of the season, everyone thought we had a proper player there. And then in the next season, he scored one goal right at the end of the season, last game of the season. You've got to say that was a flop of a season. This year, uh, he is starting to turn it around. Obviously, with those two goals at Leicester, uh, played really well against West Ham, probably one of our better players against Chelsea I think well. since Conte's come in, when he has played, since Conte's come in, he's been pretty good. Yeah. So maybe that's, that's the hope. All in all, it him. is underwhelming. Yeah. I wouldn't call him a flop, because I even think under Mourinho... Like, even when he wasn't playing well, he still, like, um, contributes. But it's just, he's definitely, in terms of attacking, yeah, it has to be underwhelming. Underwhelming, yeah. Uh, Jedson Fernandez, I'm just going to, I'm just going to talk about that penalty against Norwich. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's about it, really. He goes straight into flop. Yeah, he was terrible. I don't think he had one good game for us, ever. Uh, I thought he was shocking. He was, he was awful. 
He was awful. He was, I don't know, I, we didn't know where to play him. Uh, we played him on what, the left, what right. What position is he? We don't know. I, I don't know if he still knows. Um, uh, he, we, we played him all over the shop. He um, was a shocking player. He was, he was awful in all positions. I remember um, going with you to Southampton away in the FA Cup when uh, he made his debut. Mm -hmm. And he came on for the last 20 minutes and he did some crazy skill over a player's head. And me and you would look at each other like, wow, what player? Yeah, I remember, oh my God. <laughs> We've done, we got out of the bag, but he was terrible. Yeah. He couldn't control a ball, couldn't pass a ball. Uh, Mourinho didn't know what to do with him. Uh, oh, and, and then we were, yeah. I mean, did he, would he leave after six months or a year? I don't even remember. He was just rubbish. Was he there? Was he there in second I think we cut, we cut his loan short, didn't we? After six months. Uh, I think it was an 18 month loan. An 18 month. I don't know if it was after a year or after six months. It was one of the two. See, we can't even, I can't even remember. Nah. <laughs> That's how bad it was. No, nah, well, let's move on. The next one's going to divide opinion, I think, Gareth Bell. Um, I'm going to put him in good signing. <laughs> I mean, considering it's Bale, you could argue the fact that he wasn't prime Bale when we sold him could be underwhelming. But yeah, I think he has to be a good signing. I don't think he'd be a star signing just because he, unfortunately, uh, it took him six months, didn't it, to really start playing regularly. Um, and then once he did start playing regularly, he was only good um, against... Um, obviously, he had a great game against Leicester last year the season, but whenever he played, for example, against Arsenal or, or, or teams of that that's, nature... That's, that's pretty much the only big game he played against Arsenal. He didn't yeah. really play against any other big teams. Mourinho didn't really trust him. You're right. But it took, I think just because of the fact it took him so long to really get going... Yes, so he, can, he can't be anything more than a good signing. But I think, look, what was it, 11 Premier League goals in the end? Yeah. Like, uh, like he did pretty well. When, when, when him, a Kane and Son were in full fly, it was beautiful. It was. For those few games, it happened. I thought it was too few and far between. But, but it was really good to see. But and to come in and, and get 11 good. goals like that, especially after not playing football for as long as he did, the six months, it, well, I don't know, however long, the first half of the season, how long it took him to settle in and stuff like that and get his foot fitness back. I don't know if that was down to him or down to Jose. Yeah, it's too, um, who it's, knows? It's hard to say, but once he did get into the team, um, he scored some great goals for us, gave us some great moments. Um, it was great to see him on a football pitch for Spurs again. Unfortunately, we never got to see it in person because the one game that we did go to that season, the cup final, uh, he never got picked by uh, yeah, He came on Mason. though, didn't he? He came on late. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he came on a bit late, but he didn't really get involved in the game. So I, I really enjoyed Bell's uh, second half of the season. And for that, I think it's got to go into good signing. Yeah, uh, that's why I'll put him in. Good signing. All right, Bell goes into good signing. Joe Hart. Unfortunately, that goes straight into flop, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I thought he was terrible. Uh, when pretty much he only played Europa League games. I don't think he played any in the, in the um, Premier League or Carabao Cup. Every game he played in seemed Did to play in the FA Cup? from Can't the uh, from long distance. No, he didn't play in the FA Cup either. Yeah, and his the problems that he had before joining Tottenham, he had at Tottenham. Um, I, yeah, I think he was. He conceded so many goals from distance. He was really unconvincing when he did play. I can't remember him having a good game. Um, he made a couple of good saves, but for in the Europa League. But other than that, yeah, I think he has to be a flop. flop. And he and we did get a million for him, so that was good. <laughs> Joe Hart goes into <laughs> flop. Uh, that's the best thing uh, we can say about it. We got a million for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Doherty, flop. Yeah, I wouldn't even say yeah. He's worse than underwhelming. Unfortunately, I think he's a flop. Yeah. I think if he's if he had come in and he got like like one goal and two assists or something you can say okay like he did decent but he hasn't even done that he's done nothing pretty much ever since he's come oh, apart from li of literally uh two games away at leicester where he played pretty well <laughs> um the end of last season and this season Lit that's literally all he's done he's been no more than like a five or six out of ten at his by very the way, best that second game at leicester you're talking about as a 10 minute cameo 15 minute cameo no he kept half time came oh, half time that was it, yeah um but yeah he's I think he's like never been more than like a five or six out of ten. Yeah, yeah. He's That's on a good flop. day. Flop, flop, flop. Uh, he's been terrible most most of his time at Tottenham. So flop, flop, flop. flop. Next one, Pierre, the Viking, Emil Hoybier. After first six, his first six months, you're paying him a star signing, but he hasn't been able to kind of keep up those kind of high standards. Still, ve I still think he's a good player even now. Obviously, he's one of Conte's most trusted players. Mm. I think the fact that he's so he's been so trusted by every manager, though, you could argue puts him in star signing because maybe that's the only player that we've had who's really yeah. nailed down. And and like you say, he's like one of the most relied on players in the first team now. So from that perspective, he's a star signing. But this season, especially for a good couple of months, his form dropped off dramatically. 
But I would say um, for what we're trying to achieve, like getting back to that potch, uh, you know, prime potch in, in that sort of levels of uh, performance, Hoybier doesn't even get a look in in that team. Let's be honest with Wanyama and um, Dembele there. No, he's not on that level, or especially prime Wanyama. But could he have been? I reckon if he was un, in the squad under prime potch, he could have been very good in that team. He would have been. I reckon he'd be he very good in that team. Player. He wouldn't have been a starter. I reckon one in that second season when Wanyama got injured, I reckon he could have slotted in to replace him. He could have slotted in, but it still would have been a downgrade. It would have been a downgrade, but that's because of Wanyama was literally like the best, one of the best CDMs in the league. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to not be a downgrade on that. I think Ahoybia uh, seems undroppable from all managers. So that's why I'd put him in star signing. Only because he's like, he seems undroppable. He doesn't like it's only undroppable because of the state of the squad. I think it's more it's more on the state of the squad than him as a player, in my opinion. Yeah, true. Um, true. So that for me, that's why he goes into good signing instead of SAR signing because we still want better. But are we like are we going to look to upgrade Hoybier in the summer? Probably not this summer. No. We've got Benton Core, which has got very yeah. similar levels, which you Skip never know. Winks. You never know. Benton Core and Skip could be the two going forward. You never know. Um, like Hoybier, when you're looking at our squad now, Hoybier, Skip, Winks, and Benton Core. Yeah, I know uh, Conte puts a lot of trust in Hoybier and probably trusts him the most out of all of them, but he's not the one standing out there being like he's much better than the other ones. You know what I mean? They're all very similar levels. Well, maybe that's what, well, maybe Conte does believe he's much better than the other ones. That's why he's so trusted. Mm. From a fan's point of view, I mean, Hoybier does a lot of things which, uh, which are easily pointed out as big mistakes like passing and stuff and sometimes he gets overrun. But maybe a lot of good stuff goes unnoticed and it doesn't go unnoticed by the managers. I don't think we can put him in star signing, to be honest. I think good signing, but at the, t uh, at the top end of good signing kind of thing. All right. Are you, you never know, though. Maybe in a couple of years' time, he will be a star signing. Maybe, but right now, I think top end of good signing. All right, I'll put him in good signing then. That's Pierre Emil Hoybier, good signing. Regulon, and I think that's pretty much the same as Hoybier, to be honest. He's come in. He's kind of grabbed that role on the left wing back, mm. which he hasn't really had that much competition, let's be honest. Mm, no. Um, but I don't think he's been good enough to be a star signing. Like, yeah, unfortunately. As I, again, I, I don't think he's a player where I'm going to upgrade anytime soon at uh, left wing back, unless he goes back to Madrid in the summer, uh, which mm. I doubt. Um, I think he has been pretty good since he's come in. I don't think he's been so good that like he's blown everyone away. Mm. I think there are some games where he's been really great, but uh, but unfortunately, more often than not, uh, he leaves you a bit wanting more sometimes, yeah. especially second half of the last season. He was terrible uh, for a last couple of months or so. He was really bad. I think this season he's stepped up again, especially I think he's improved since Conte's come in. I definitely think that. And um, I, we could on his crossing though. We could be looking at um, one of the best fullbacks in the league under Conte if he, his trajectory keeps continuing. But at the moment, yeah, it's just a good signing. Yeah. So Regulon goes into good signing. Joe Roden. Goes into flop, unfortunately. Where else could he go? He hasn't Nowhere. played. Uh, yeah. When he has played, he's been okay, but he's been few and far between. Has he even had like 20 appearances for us? He even had like 15. He 10. had like three or four games in a row under, under Mourinho. Yeah. And he's played maybe a few Europa League games. But even, to be honest, this season, for me, I mean, last season, I thought whenever he played, he was all right. But this season, when I've seen him, haven't oh, been he impressed. He hasn't played this season, has he? Against Morecambe, he played. He wasn't great. He was injured, though, that game. Yeah, well, that well, that's all living, I have to judge really. him on. Yeah, um, I think he's played in some conference games as well where he hasn't been so good as well. So for me, it has to be a flop. All right, flop. And last but not least, Vinny, Carlos Vinicius. I wouldn't put him in flop, but I would put him in un underwhelming uh, because he came in as... We were so desperate for a sub striker when he came in, and he came as this guy who's finally going to challenge Kane. He was uh, the top goal scorer in Portugal, as a top goal scorer for Benfica when he came in, uh, top scorer in the Portuguese league, sorry, last season when he first came in. They were like, okay, we've finally got a guy. This has got a, a, a striker who's banging the goals in form. And he came and he did bang in the goals in the Europa League, but he barely got a look in in the Premier League, barely played. He got one goal against Villa. 
And from that point of view, you know, when you've got a sub striker like that, when he did get a small run of games when Kane was injured and didn't do that well. So I, I think it um, has to be an underwhelming because I think if he could have got um, some more goals, I mean, appearances in the Premier League, he would have been maybe a good signing and we might have even kept him. But he just didn't. Mourinho just felt like he just wasn't good enough at all to be playing in Premier League in the Premier League. He was only good enough for Europa League. And to be fair, he did do well in Europa League. I think when he was called upon, he actually did well for us. Um, in the Premier League, he hardly got minutes. I mean, I would like to see how many. Do you want to check quickly the stats of how many he played in the Premier League? Because I literally think he played under five games. In Off the, the top League. of my head, I remember he played again. He started at home to Chelsea. I remember he missed that chance right at the end yeah. where we could, he should have scored. And then I remember he started against Aston Villa where we won 2-0. He scored. And he scored. And I'm pretty sure he started the next game and then he didn't do so well in the next game. I can't remember whoever, whoever we played. And then he never got really got a look in again. But, you know, when a lot of the times we were talking about uh, when before he came in, we were talking about he want, we need to bring him in to ease the burden on Kane in terms of the cup games and European and he, games. Yeah, and he did exactly that. exactly what he did. And he got a bag of goals. I mean, he scored 10 goals that season. I think he scored 10, I think nine in the Europa League, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he. I think he came in and did the job that that we asked him to do. Yeah, but for you, but 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 the only reason we didn't sign him is because he was underwhelming. If you understand, because mm. <laughs> he wasn't he, he wasn't good enough for us to be an option in the Premier League on a regular basis. Yeah. So from that point of view, he was he was he did do the job we needed him, which is why probably which is you could argue why Kane was so good last season because he was didn't have to play all those other games. He could just focus on Premier League. Um, but unfortunately, for what for what we needed long term for a, a striker that a, a, a sub striker who would be in the squad for a period of time, I think is underwhelming from that point of view. All right, we'll put Carlos in underwhelming, and wow, so that no is the signings. end of the tier list. Not one star signing. We've got five good signings. We've got six underwhelming signings. And then we've got eight flop signings under the Steve Hitchin tenure. But out of those eight flop signings, two could be attributed to um, to, to uh, Pochettino. Yeah, you could argue that. Um, but, yeah, so, so only five out of 19 were good signings under Hitchin. Not one star signing. Not one signing where you're saying this is an un what an unbelievable signing unbelievable. that was. That's unbelievable. So are we saying that Human Son is the last star signing we've made? Um can't remember whether all the signings have got I had it up, but yeah, in terms of the of, of signing that proper impacted the first team and 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 was like a brilliant player for us, like undoubtedly. Although you could argue after the first year Son, you know, took some time to develop. But yeah, I mean, since then I mean, you could have said Wanyama, but of course he got injured after one year and then never came back. Mm. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. But that, even that wasn't under Hitchin. Um, so ever since then, there's been no one signing-wise who's really stood out. And, and the flirt, the fact that we, we, it's been five years, and uh, four, sorry, six years since Poch, and we still heavily rely on Lloris, on Kane, on Son, says it all. Even Davis was still heavily relying on. Yeah, I did see... Um that that the whole starting 11 now the whole po of the potch big starting 11 now are gone apart from those three everyone's gone um and then we're just left with a few of the fringe players like davis and i can't remember who else was here when um oh delhi's gone now as well he Delhi's was probably gone one now. of them yeah you know what i mean so it is worth saying that hitchin did do a few deals negotiated a few deals that daniel levy screwed up in terms of jack Grealish. um who else was there Di bruno Bala, dybala bruno. yeah uh, there were quite a few scrinia i think was one of them mm. um so i mean those all could have gone into star signings if daniel levy pulled through on the deal definitely right and um so clear that clearly shows that he does have some sort of talent identifying players and he seems to be very popular around uh, tottenham and Con apparently conte was close to him good friends of paratici and now it looks like everton and newcastle are sniffing around him which shows that they don't think he's the most incompetent um sworn director that all the fan base think but there's no getting away that record under him five years all the signings we made whether all of them are attributed to him or not it's a poor record yeah. and that's all we got that's that's reality so what what are we saying we're happy to see the back of, of Hitchin then yeah I mean look I, I, I wouldn't say I'm happy to see the back of him but I'm happy Paratici's now got full I mean I'm I think he had full control anyway as soon as Paratici came in Hitchin was taking a back seat and that's the that's the truth what so what's he actually doing after Paratici came in 
I don't know. Apparently, it was just his right hand man or something. <laughs> what does that even mean? Don't know. He had to, he had to be demoted. So, I saw. I mean, I'm not. I'm not here to say like I'm happy. He, I'm happy he's going, but it's probably just best for everyone. All right. Well, that is your Steve Hitchin transfer tier list. I want to know your opinions on this as well. Which of these players would you put in, put in the specific tiers that we have uh, brought out for you today? Do you think the, the way that we've done it is pretty spot on? If you think we're wrong, let us know in the comments section below. But that is our Steve Hitchin transfer tier list. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.